Good morning and welcome to the Revelation Salisbury. We thank God for each and every one of you this morning. It is a beautiful, cool morning. And we thank God that you came out today. We hope you enjoyed the worship and the praise today. And we're going to turn our Bibles this morning to Isaiah chapter number 40. Isaiah chapter number 40, verse 25 through 31. Now this morning, as you're turning there to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 25 through 31, I want to read to you a story this morning. So first of all, the story says, once upon a time at a large mountainside, there was an eagle nest with four large eagle eggs inside. One day an earthquake rocked the mountain, causing one of the eggs to roll down to a chicken farm located in the valley below. The chickens knew that they must protect the eagle egg, and eventually the eagle egg hatched and a beautiful eagle was born. Stay with me now. Being chickens, the chickens raised the eagle to be a chicken. The eagle loved this home and family, but it seemed the spirit cried out for more. One day the eagle looked to the skies above and noticed a group of mighty eagles soaring. Oh, the eagle cried, I wish I could soar like these birds. The chickens roared with laughter. You can't soar like those. You are a chicken, and chickens do not soar. The eagle continued staring at his real family up above and dreaming that he could be like them. Each time the eagle talked about his dreams, he was told it cannot be done. That was what the eagle learned to believe. He learned to believe that after the time the eagle stopped though dreaming and he continued to live life as a chicken. Finally, after a long life as a chicken, the eagle passed away. The moral of the story is that you can become what you believe you are. If you ever dream to become an eagle, follow your dreams, not the words of the chicken. So let's look this morning at Isaiah chapter number 40 and verse number 25 through 31. Read along with me. And it says this morning, To whom then Will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things? Not bringeth out their host by number, he calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his mighty, for that he is strong in power, not one felleth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest? O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. And 29, and it says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. However, in verse 31, it says this, folks. But they that wait upon the Lord, the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Now this morning, I want to talk to you that there are two types of people within the church. There are either chickens or there are eagles. There's either chickens or there's eagles. You have chickens or you have eagles. So this morning, I want to talk to you just for a moment about chickens and eagles. First of all, chickens, as many of you already know this morning, that they're not very clean creatures, that they mess all around in the places that they sleep, and they scratch in the dirt 
looking for some food to have. They have a pecking order as well. Normally there's somebody that rules what they call the roost. There are over 30 million chickens, excuse me, 30 billion chickens in the world today. I said 30 billion chickens in the world today. So there's a lot of chickens. The chickens scratch in the dirt. They can't fly. They can just go small distances. So this morning, I want to read one more scripture. The scripture comes from 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 17 through 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21. As you're turning there, I want to tell you about the eagle. The eagle, however, is one that can soar miles high. The eagle can soar way up in the sky and go over any obstacle and over any situation. It doesn't matter. He can fly higher. An eagle is one of the highest flying birds in the bird species. An eagle can fly up and they can see their prey from a long distance. An eagle, when trouble comes, he flies higher than the trouble. An eagle can soar past any problems. Let's look at this scripture in 2 Corinthians 6, 5 through 7, that's 5, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Read along with me. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. And who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ? And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, excuse me, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors. We are you, you, and me are ambassadors this morning. It says, for he, in verse 21, hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, my dear friend, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So the first point that I want to make this morning is that we can be believers, our new creature in Christ. We, you and me, are new believers and new creatures in Christ. We're new creatures in Christ. My friend, when you learn of Christ and you trust in Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior into your life and change from your ways, you are now a new creature in Christ. Repentance means turning from what you've done in the past, the sinful nature of yourself, the sinful nature that you were born with because of our daddy Adam and of Satan, of course. So, the first thing I want to talk about is believers are a new creation in Christ. So over the years, I've had the opportunity to share the gospel with, with many believers out there, many people. And on several occasions, I had people say, well, if, if only I could start over, I would do better. I would live differently. But my response to them is always being that you can start over. And you can live differently. And so the Apostle Paul, though, wrote that uh, if uh, you are in Christ, that you're a new creature. So if you are in Christ this morning, you're a new creature in Christ. So what does the Apostle Paul, though, mean when he says that we're a new creature in Christ? What is he trying to say here, my dear friends? The Apostle Paul, is he trying to say that we physically change? 
Do we suddenly get taller? Do we suddenly get smaller? Do we suddenly get thinner? Or do we suddenly get fatter? What is he trying to say that we're a new creature? Is he saying that we're going to change intellectually? Are we going to get smarter? Hmm. Are we going to get dumber? Are we going to have more wisdom? Are we going to have more understanding? Are we going to suddenly become a nominee for the National Society of, of uh, Honor Society? No. Well, maybe we do we change our philosophy philosophically? Do we suddenly become a conservative Southern Baptist? Do we suddenly become a right-wing Republican? Do we suddenly become a, 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 a left-wing Democrat? Do we suddenly become a Russ Limbaugh fan? Well, as factual as it may not be, the answer is no, we do not. The Apostle Paul is not talking about any outward or physical change. The Apostle Paul is talking about a change that happens with inside of us. The lost person may still physically look the same, but their soul is changed. Their soul was dead at one time. And Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 proclaims this. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. In this letter to the Ephesian church, Paul, Apostle Paul, reminds us of a spiritual condition before coming to Christ. That there's a spiritual condition that we have before coming to Christ. It's that of a sinful nature. It's that of doing what we want to do. It's that of, of doing what you want to do, dear friends of God. He immediately reminds them, though, that the work of God is great and it's accomplished in their lives by making them alive in Christ. It's making them alive in Christ. So how are we to be new creatures when we're dead in our transgressions? He made us alive, not by ourselves, but together with Christ. So in Christ, your soul, though, has been made alive by the Spirit of God that is within you now, that dwells inside of you, my dear friends of God, that the Spirit of God that is inside of you now dwells in you and makes your spirit come alive. So I want to ask you this morning that number two point that I want to make is that you should see yourself as God sees you. You should see yourself as God sees you. Now all of these things in 2 Corinthians 5 again and in 18 it says, Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Bringing them back, us back to him. If you've been reconciled in Christ through God, and through the eyes, God's eyes, sees you in a totally different light than what you were saw before. Through God's eyes, he sees you as a son, or as a daughter of God. In Christ, you are no longer sinners doomed for destruction, but now you are saved and your sons destined for glory. Somebody shout hallelujah this morning. We're no longer destined for destruction, but we're destined for the glory of God. Hmm. So, this morning you're no longer a chicken, but you're an eagle. So then I ask you, dear friends, my church members this morning, I ask you, why do we have so many chickens within the body of Christ? 
Why do we have so many chickens in the body of Christ? Remember, a chicken is one that's scratching in the dirt looking for food. A chicken is the one that is looking around waiting for a pecking order. But an eagle is the one that has the order already because the order they know, the eagle knows the order comes from God. And when there is a storm coming, they can soar higher than any storm in any situation. They can go through and over that storm. So why again do we have so many chickens within the church? Hmm. It's a good question, my friends. Let's look. The world looks at you maybe as a loser. Maybe you even yourself might look at you as yourself as a loser at times. That's how you perceive yourself to be. The world perceives you to be. But however, it's important to know how God sees you to be, because that's who matters, is God sees you to be something greater than you even see you to be. You need to see yourself as God sees you, not as you or the world or those peers around you, those schoolmates, those classmates, those workmates, those people around you see you. You need to see you as God sees you. Hmm. The believer God sees sight, he sees a winner. What the world thinks about you is unimportant. But what God sees you is the most important. Let me ask you a question. If right now, if God right now were describing you to one of his angels, what five adjectives or nouns would he use to describe you? Trying to help you think about how God thinks of you. Think about it. How would God use words, five characteristics to describe me to his angels? Think about that just a moment. Here are some examples that I've came up with this morning or come up with this morning. He would say this, there is one of my saints. There is a son or daughter of mine. There is a priest. There goes a child of the most high God. There's one of my disciples. There is a kingdom citizen. There is a follower of my dear son. If you didn't write down or think about words like this, you don't fully understand your salvation and you don't fully understand your relationship with the most high God however see yourself as God sees you through his son remember it's like these glasses this morning without the sun or without the glasses being on everything's blurry it's not quite clear but with them on I can see great I can see good things. I can see the beauty. Jesus is like the glasses this morning. When God sees us, he sees us through the son Jesus. And it makes it clear what a picture and the reason why his son gave his life for you and for me. God sees you through the eyes of his son. That means that God sees you in the righteousness as his son as righteous. Not as you yourself righteous. But through the Son, you are made righteous. Let's listen to the word of God this morning in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In him. In him. Dear saints of God, friends of God, this morning, I want you to look at this this morning. I want you to think about it real clear today is how does God see you? Does he see you as a chicken 
scratching in the dirt, pecking for that food? Or does he see you as an eagle soaring high? And when you're here on this level, flying on this flight to this altitude, and a problem comes, you don't go down and start scratching in the dirt, but you go up above the problem and soar over every situation, over every trial, over every tribulation that you're soaring high above, just like the eagle. If you're a Christian this morning, you're an eagle. If you are a Christian this morning, you're an eagle. If you're going through situations in your life this morning, and you don't feel like you're an eagle. I want to pray with you this morning. I want everybody this morning, if you will, to stand to your feet or bow your head and close your eyes right now. I just want to pray with you before we dismiss this morning here in a few moments. I want to say, first of all, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, Forgive me of my sins of omission and commission, Lord. I believe that you died on the cross for my life so that I might be saved. Lord Jesus, I pray that you come in and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Father God, I pray that you help me that I can soar like the eagles. Any hurt I'm going through this morning, any strife, any confusion, Lord, take it away. Cleanse me. Keep me. Make me whole. In the name of Jesus. And let the church say, Amen. This morning, I'm going to ask for the lead pastor to come at this time and pray with anyone one-on-one -on -one that would like prayer. Thank you so much for coming today. May God richly bless you and keep you. And I hope you enjoyed the word and that it, you meditate upon it this week. In Jesus' name, amen. May God richly bless you. Have a great day.